All right, uh, students, today uh, for our pronunciation work, we're going to look at two features of spoken English. First, we're going to look at stress, and then we're going to look at pitch. First, we're going to look at stress. What is stress? Do you have any ideas about what stress is in a sentence? If I say stress this word, what am I saying? Put more force into speaking that word. Okay. Could you, okay, take a look at the first sentence. That, that, that one has no stresses in it. Could you please read that, Sandy? I don't need your help. If you had to guess what the meaning of the sentence is, what would you say the meaning is? I don't need your help. I've already got everything taken care of. Okay. You have it all under control. Sentence number two. Uh, Demi, can you read that with the stress mark there under your? I don't need your help. Okay. That one's a little different. What, what do you think that one might be saying, and how is it different from the first sentence? The your is uh, forced or stressed, and it's more specific to the person. I don't need your help. I'll take Sandy's help, but I don't need your help. Right? Maybe you don't like that person, you don't want them helping you. Yeah. Or maybe they're not going to be able to help you. Maybe you're putting something up high and it's a small child or something. This is not going to be a situation where I don't need, I don't need your help. Uh, this here is showing uh, it, 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 it's an unwillingness to take that person, that specific person's help. Mm -hmm. Sentence number three. Could you read that for me, please, Demi? Is that your car? Is that your car? Can you read that for me again with no stresses? Is that your car? Okay. Now, what do you think that question is asking? Asking if the person like owns that car like right there. Does that car belong yeah. to you? Is there any attitude about it? One way or the other? No, not really. It's just a question. How about number four, Sandy? Is that your car? Is that your car? So that's stressed in the sentence, right? Correct. How, how does that change the meaning, do you think, from the last sentence? The last sentence was just a statement of fact, or just a question. Is that your car? And you, Do you own that car? And you said yes. The second one is almost like some kind of disbelief. Is that your car? Maybe I thought you drove a... A newer car or older car, I'm, I'm surprised at what I see, so that's okay. what it indicates. It's not what you expected, so that shows some sort of attitude about the car. Right. Right? So number five, number five and six are a little bit different than the last ones. Number five is a question, number six is the answer. Could you go ahead and read the question, Demi? What day was your appointment? Okay. And Sandy, could you please read, please read the answer? The appointment was on Friday. Okay, Friday. Now, could you say the sentence again with the stress underneath the day of the week? The appointment was on Friday. Okay, Friday. In this case, for number six, we're stressing the actual word in our answer that's the key word to answer the question. So before, when we stressed a word in the sentence, it was to show a certain attitude or a certain way of viewing something. Mm -hmm. In number six, it's to show that this is the key word in our answer. We're going to go ahead, we're going to stress Tuesday. That's answering the person's real question. Now we're going to look at uh, a feature of what's called intonation. It's kind of the way that you sing English. How there's kind of a tone that follows the words and lifts them up or drops them down, depending on what you're trying to communicate. We're going to look at pitch, specifically at the end of a sentence. So. Could you take a look at the first sentence? It says, this is your shirt. And shirt is written on a line on an arrow that goes which direction? Down. Down, okay. The one below it, it's written on an arrow too, the word shirt. On the sentence below it, what, what direction is the arrow going? Up. Oh. Up. Oh. So if you had to make uh, an up sound for shirt, what would it be? If you said, your shirt. From your, how do you go up on shirt? Can you demonstrate that to me? Say your shirt and go up on shirt. This is your shirt. This is your... This is your shirt. Okay, this is your shirt. So for this is your shirt, what is that? Is that a statement of a fact or are you asking somebody something? It's a question. This is your shirt. Okay, now could you read the other one, Demi? The one where shirt is going downwards? This is your shirt. Okay, that's a different kind of a sentence, <clears throat> isn't it? How is that one different from the question? It's more of a statement, and it's more like, yeah. Statement. Okay. Well, as a general rule in the English language, 
this downward pitch on the end of the sentence means that you're stating a fact. You're saying something, that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. The upward pitch at the end of the sentence is kind of telling the listener, there's something I need from you. I'm telling you with the tone of my voice that this is a question, and I'm hoping to get an answer in response. This is your shirt? This is your shirt? Now, can we take a look at number three? Sandy, could you read number three and, and, and read the last word of the sentence, Michael, so that it goes down? His name is Michael. Is that a question or is that a statement? It's a statement of fact. Okay. Demi, can you read number four and try to try to mirror the, the, the upward motion under Michael? His name is Michael. Or his name is Michael. The upward motion under Michael? His name is Michael. Or his his name, name is Michael. His name is Michael? Yeah, I can't do this. His Just name. relax. Don't be nervous. His name is Michael. His name is Michael. His name is Michael. What is that? Is that a statement or is that a question? It's a question. You're asking somebody to confirm that that person's name is Michael. Yeah? Mm -hmm. How about number five, Mom? I mean, it's Sandy. The man is here. The man is here. Statement of fact. He's statement out of, of fact. He's the at the front here. door. The man is here. Demi, you, you're, you're in the bathroom. You come out. And what do you ask us? The man is here. The man is here. We have the upward arrow under here. It's a question. We want to know. Now, over here, we have uh, a paper with some sentences on it. They're written so that they're either questions or they're statements. I want you to take a look at the way the sentence is written, and I want you to speak it the opposite to me. If it's a statement, I want you to change it so it's a question. And if it's a question, I'd like for you to change it so that it's a statement. Okay. Take a look at number one. The arrow goes down under the final word in number one which means that we're going to change it from a statement into a question. a question. So go ahead and try your hand at that, Demi. Today we have a test. Today we have a test. I forgot. I didn't check my syllabus. I wasn't paying attention <coughs> yesterday. Right? Sandy, number two. We are leaving soon. We are leaving soon. You're telling me. You're t I'm taking too long to pack. We're leaving soon. You need to hurry. Okay. Demi, number three. You bought it? He bought it? He bought what? He bought it? He was talking about it. He actually went out and bought it? It's a question. We want to know if he bought it. Mm -hmm. Number four. They came back. They came back. We're talking about something that happened. We're telling somebody about something that happened, right? It's a statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to stop there with the questions, but in general, you're taking a look at this. You're seeing that the <coughs> upward pitch at the end of a sentence is signaling that that sentence is a question. question. And so if you see the downward pitch at the end of a sentence, or you hear a downward pitch at the end of a sentence that's spoken, what kind of a sentence is that? It's a statement. That's a statement. So I'm not trying to teach you how to use pitch in one 60-minute lesson. I'm not trying to teach you how to use stress in one 60-minute lesson. What I'm hoping that we've accomplished here, at least today, is that you've heard this feature. You've heard what it sounds like to force a word a little more than the rest of the words in a sentence. To stress it. I'm hoping that you've taken a look at the pitch and you've heard and recognized the way that the downward ending is telling your listener, I'm telling you something. And the upward inflection is telling your listener, here's what I have, but give me something more. I have a question for you to answer. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you very much, Professor. Cut. Yeah.